results. Let's get to GM CEO Mary Barra alongside our Phil LeBeau. Mary, it's good to have you. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. You know, there, there's a lot, a lot going on with the strike impact and the UAW contract and crews. How, how's the underlying business, though, doing for you? Uh, the underlying business is, is doing quite well. We have a, a really strong internal combustion engine portfolio uh, that we continue to do very well, and we see growth opportunities this year, or this year building on what we did last year. Uh, from an EV perspective, we also see this is our year to really execute and see growth there. So uh, it's, it's a uh, strong performance in 23. I'm really proud of the team, and I think 24 can be another strong year. Yeah, I mean, you're giving a pretty positive outlook here. Some are wondering whether you're setting the bar too high out of the gate, given some of the, the weakness that we're seeing across EVs. Well, but if you look at the entire market, we think we're going to have another 16 million unit market. You just uh, shared uh, at the beginning of your show uh, how the economy is improving. We see that. And we still, you know, we ended the year uh, with low inventory across many of our key segments. So this is going to be an important year, again, for our internal combustion engine programs, as well as our, our EVs. And EV, now that we have uh, really solved the module constraint, and we think that'll be behind us by the middle of the year, we have uh, several vehicles out into the out already that we're going to be getting to dealers and getting into customers' hands, and we have several we're launching this year. But do Americans really want them? We kind of got tepid, tepid outlook from Tesla. There are all sorts of signals. Hertz giving back a third of its EV fleet that the demand just I, isn't what it's thought to be. I think, uh, you know, uh, on a transformation as big as this. I don't think anyone expected it to be linear. Last year in the United States, it was about 7 percent of the total market. Even the lowest forecast by outside um, analysts uh, is that it's going to be about 10 percent. So that still represents strong growth. And I think this is where General Motors is uniquely positioned. We didn't have uh, as many EVs as we had strong demand for. For instance, with the Cadillac Lyric, we've seen sequential improvement as we've had availability of sales uh, starting in September. And we see that strength carrying in. Even in January, we think it will match what we did in December. Even when you look at all the weather across the country, that stopped people from buying vehicles. So again, with our particular portfolio. Uh, we also have 100,000 uh, either orders or reservations for our EV pickups, and we're planning to, as we increase production, deliver those through 24 and 25. So I think with the specific products that we have, we're well positioned. Of course, we also have flexibility. And so if uh, EV demand is lower uh, than that 10 percent uh, growth rate, we'll be able to index back and forth between ICE and EV. Two of our plants, uh, one in Spring Hill, Tennessee, and one in Ramos, uh, Aris Bay, Mexico, have the ability to build either ICE or EV. And even at our factory zero, we can switch between the different EVs. So we've got flexibility to respond. But I do think for General Motors, we're going to see an increase in the EVs that we sell this year. Mary, it's Phil. Um, while you are expecting an increase in EV demand, you're also going to be doing some pivoting here and uh, answering what a lot of dealers are calling for, which is for more hybrids. And these will be plug-in electric hybrids. You haven't put a target out there, or at least you didn't with the analyst call just a few minutes ago. How much demand do you expect to be out there in terms of hybrids? Well, you know, just like uh, the EV demand has, has been an up and down uh, uh, trajectory, we've seen that with hybrids. A few years back, um, hybrid demand was dropping um, uh, pretty quickly. So we're going to have a balanced approach. You know, when we look at it, uh, we are still committed to an all EV future and getting our light duty portfolio all EV by 2035. But in, in between, um, uh, now in 2035, we think hybrids will play a role, especially as the charging infrastructure continues to build and also um, to meet a, a more stringent regulatory environment. So I don't have a specific forecast. We'll be able to flex. Again, this is technology we've already deployed in other regions. So we'll deploy it in North America when we think it's, it's best suited to help us meet the regulatory requirements. But I would say, Phil, for 2024, with the availability and the interest that we have in our Ultium-based EVs, I think we're going to see growth there.